Hello friends, this is Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network every Thursday afternoon from 1 to 1.30 p.m. I'm your host, Danilo Cuellar, and today we'll be discussing how government-approved marriage license destroys passionate relationships and ruins the essence of pure love. This is um, from my blog post. Um, from the same name. So, the oft-repeated mantra that is parroted as requisite of a decent, civilized, law-abiding taxpayer's life is, quote, get good grades in school so you can get into a good university. Study something that will get you a good job. Get a degree so you can get a good job. Get a 401k and save for your retirement. Get a mortgage on a house. Get married, have kids, pay your taxes, retire in your old age, and die. End quote. This post will be discussing how the, quote, government-approved marriage license destroys passionate relationships. It does this by annihilating personal freedom, making the affairs of a relationship subject to the penal system, further inviting, quote, government into our personal lives, and by making the union and separation of two individuals a government matter that extorts more currency out of the pockets of the people. Love, relationships, courting, and children are beautiful things. The essence of their beauty is maintained insofar as they are free of surveillance, control, regulation, observation, scrutiny, and examination. It is only in the context of true freedom have truly the, the, the truly magnificent wonders been created that we appreciate and love today. This equally applies in the realm of relationships. The greater the degree of state control and regulation, of personal relationships, the lesser the degree of quality and value inherent in those relationships. They are inversely proportional to each other. Where state power increases and concentrates, love, passion, creativity, and ingenuity must suffer. It is genuinely understood that an unmarried couple is together because they genuinely want to be together and will, and will part ways the moment one party feels abused or exploited. Therefore, the incentive is for each to treat the other respectfully and mindfully. A personal relationship is an entirely voluntary union which would not otherwise exist if both people genuinely did not want it to happen. When the monopoly on initiated violence and aggression known as government is introduced to this magnificent phenomenon, the incentives become perverted and distorted. Regarding a state-approved married couple, there is, a less, there is less incentive to treat one's spouse with kindness and respect because it is understood that the process of divorce is expensive, onerous, and tedious, as is the case with anything related to the bureaucratic labyrinth that is, quote, government. Hence, many married couples remain in these quasi-forced relationships to the point of enduring significant domestic abuse and spousal rape a terrifying reality that is scarcely heard of amongst unmarried couples. An act of infidelity amongst an unmarried couple is either quickly resolved between the two or the relationship is terminated without any lasting harmful effects. That same act of infidelity amongst state-approved married couples falls under the crime, quote crime, of adultery and under section 255.17 of the New York State Penal Law is a Class B misdemeanor and is punishable by 90 days in prison or a $500 fine. Now, imagine a man who engaged in consensual sex with a woman spending time in prison next to serial killers and true rapists. This is another example of a victimless crime that wreaks havoc on the lives of otherwise peaceful people. This is the injustice system, hard at work, wasting the stolen funds of taxation. A state-approved marriage license is a double-edged sword with no handle. Any way you hold it, you are likely to get sliced. Many people mistakenly conflate obtaining a marriage license with love. The two are diametrically opposed. Marriage is a business contract. It is an open invitation for the state to begin meddling in affairs that should be left private between two or more people. Divorce court is a $50 billion 
year industry and cost the average victim $50,000. How many of you have such extra currency to spend? If you invite the venomous rattlesnake of government into your bedsheets, do not be surprised when you get bitten. And I end with a quote by um, Oscar Wilde. <clears throat> uh, one should always love. That's the reason one should never marry. So, marriage. A very uh, touchy topic for those of us that have grown up in, uh, immersed in culture, as we all have. By the way, the word culture, we should uh, take care to remember. Uh, the, uh, one of the important parts of the word culture is cult, in that um, that's mostly what it is. Is a rule of a uh, set of uh, guidelines and um, and ways of acting and behaving that uh, were taught to us by authority, authority figures, mostly our parents and mostly uh, um, in our go government schooling, um, and we are expected to all conform and um, obey these uh, societal uh, accepted rites of passage and, you know, rituals without question, right? But of course, um, if we do that, then what kind of society would we become, right? We would not, we would cease to become a society of thinking um, individuals and we would rather be, um, you know, uh, absorbed into the collective mob that is, um, you know, that, that democracy makes of people, right? That uh, the unthinking mob. And, uh, you know, we all know how uh, <clears throat> that often turns out in history. When people uh, engage in groupthink or in, in lynch mob behavior, <clears throat> it's not exactly uh, philosophical results, is it? <clears throat> so marriage is one of those things that uh, we were all taught is uh, it's just something you do. You know, you, you meet someone and, uh, you know, you go out for maybe a few years and you get to know the person, you get married, you have kids, right? <laughs> That's the, that's the other thing people conflate is marriage and kids, right? It's like, it's like if I ask someone, are you, do you have kids? And they say, no, I'm not married yet. <laughs> I didn't ask you that. <laughs> so that, that would be an example of an uh, automatic, unthinking response, right? A uh, knee-jerk reaction to a question, right? Um, but in reality, you know, it's entirely possible for you to have kids without being married. And it does not necessarily signify a dysfunctional relationship at all. Um, all it signifies is perhaps the people understand that they want their relationship to be kept private, right? They don't want the, uh, the government to uh, be, intervening, be intervening and meddling in their personal affairs, which is entirely logical, right? Why, why would you want more, um, um, more surveillance, more control, more regulation of your personal life. doesn't make sense, right? Most people don't want to be controlled. However, then, if most people don't want to be controlled, why do most people still get married, right? So this is more um, <clears throat> due to culture, due to you know, peer pressure, um, conforming with society, right? So, but if you take a, a few moments to sit down, <clears throat> and reason this entire thing out and, and you, you begin to come to the conclusion that um, marriage is one of those things that um, it, it seems logical, seems natural. You know, I met the person, why not I should get married, right? I'm living together. <laughs> but uh, what, what are the incentives that, that, that it brings out in people, right? And this is what we have to examine. Is, um, so two people that are not married, right? <clears throat> They're just together. Um, they are together because they want to be together, right? They're together, it's entirely voluntary, they, they want you want to share your love with another person, right? And most of the time, um, it's an open, you know, communication relationship, right? If there's things that the other person's hiding, you know, one person might feel, um, might feel shafted and exploited and, you know, would not want to be uh, in such a relationship, right? Why would you stay with such a person, right? So, if, um, 
you know, if two people are together voluntarily and let's say there's open communication and, you know, they say, okay, we're going to see other people. Again, it's open communication, no, no victim. What's the problem? There's no problem at all, right, whatsoever. If they want to have a child, they have a child, right? They, they, they take care of the child. And, and again, um, you know, any woman um, who has a child with a man, hopefully she would understand her, uh, her boyfriend, right, so much so that uh, she, would, she would know that he would stay around um, and help with raising the child, right? Because this is another thing that uh, some, people, some people say, well, I want to get married because it shows their commitment to me. And it shows me they want to stay around for the child. <laughs> so essentially what this is saying is, w w what they're saying in other words, is uh, that marriage is a ball and chain link to your spouse, right? It's closing the cage door. It's the complete annihilation of freedom, all right? And, uh, and this is very sadistic, actually, <laughs> to, to attempt to enslave someone into a legally binding contract, freeing uh, f from which freedom from that contract is... Uh, a very arduous task indeed, right? So um, it's a little bit sadistic to think of it like that, you know, that you feel like you have to enslave somebody to force them to be around, right? And so there's two things wrong with that. Well, well, the first thing is that's completely sadistic and evil and immoral, right? That somebody would even attempt to do that to another person, right? That would be very similar to slavery. And in another sense, marriage does not even, uh, for the most part, um, for, for many, um, many husbands, marriage does not even um, perform that function, right? So, you know, how many husbands do you see, you know, their, their, their wives get, you know, they get married and they have kids and the man is a deadbeat and he just goes off and he leaves the, the wife to, to take care of the children himself, herself, right? So, so even, even then, the, this legally binding contract that is marriage, state approved marriage license, um, is not even successful in performing the function that the woman expects it to perform, right? So a man can leave and go off by himself, and <laughs> what can she do? You know, what are you going to take, get, take the man to court? What are you going to do? Get a, a, get a bounty hunter? <laughs> you know, what are you going to do, right? So, um, you know, it may, I guess it may ruin his credit. It may, you know, um, I guess he can't get married again, but, you know, who cares, basically? You know, if the man really doesn't want to stay around, nothing is going to, nothing is going to uh, prevent him from leaving, right? Not, not some piece of paper and, um, you know, not anything. It's not, you know, if a person really wants to do something, they're going to find a way around it, right? This is exactly why uh, the whole concept of uh, government, uh, monopoly on violence and institutionalized aggression it, uh, is completely um, counterproductive and destructive to society, right? Because laws are basically... Um, you know, useless, because if people want to do something, they're going to do it. They're going to find ways around it, right? The only thing that laws create are more criminals, right? That's the only thing that <laughs> they create. The laws do not create uh, law and order. That's, that's a complete fallacy. The more laws, the more criminals. That's, that's just the way it is. I think it was Plato that said that. Um, so, so the marriage license does nothing to uh, keep a man around whatsoever, all right, whatsoever. So it's completely useless, you know. It's um, so so that's looking at it from, um, you know, from the unmarried uh, the unmarried couple. Uh, so so their incentive is to treat each other in the best possible behavior, in the best possible way, right? With kindness, with respect, with um, decency, with compassion, right? Because at any point, basically, if you're not happy with your spouse, you can just get up and leave, right? There's no there's no con legally binding contract. There's no reason to stay around, right? There's no connection whatsoever other than the, the, the desire for two people to spend time together um, willingly, right? So then you have, um, so that's the incentive, right? It's an entirely, uh, <coughs> entirely understandable incentive. And you can also relate this to so many things uh, regarding uh, government about, <coughs> you know, w w what's the incentive of people um, before the welfare state, right, before Social Security, before um, unemployment, before, you know, 
um, you know, Medicare, Medicaid, what's the incentive, right? The incentive is for people before all that, you know, government uh, free stuff, you know, which is essentially stolen, stolen stuff, not, not, nothing in life is ever free. <laughs> because if there's labor required, if there's, if there's resources uh, that are used, then there is a cost and you have to search for who pays that cost, right? Somebody has always been, somebody always pays the cost, right? Most of the time it's the taxpayers, people who are getting uh, robbed. So, so, so before the welfare state, right, people had the incentive to treat their family, their close friends, their community with, you guessed it, kindness, respect, decency, compassion, right? <laughs> Basically, it, en it encouraged virtue, right? When you have um, a stateless society, when you have um, a society just, that just is formed based on the merits of one's own behavior, you know, you, you're, you're fostering self-responsibility and... Um, and so all of a sudden people take, take uh, responsibility for their own actions because they understand repercussions, right? If you act like a jerk, if you act like a, like a moron, you treat others rudely, you treat others with disrespect, surprise, surprise, <laughs> nobody's going to want to be your friend, nobody's going to want to help you when you're in hard times, right? When you're sick, when, you, you know, when, you, when your kids are sick, when you need a babysitter, when, uh, when you're out of work. Who's going to want to help you? Who's going to want to help someone who is completely uh, disrespectful and um, moronic or idiotic, right? Or, uh, you know, that, it, it, that's, that's the natural incentive, right? You, you, um, you put out good energy now to the, those around you and you will get, um, uh, you know, reimbursed or they will reciprocate when you are in times of need. And... Uh, and so, and so, and then later you have a, you know, the, the rise of government and state power, and then you have the rise of the welfare state, uh, social security, um, um, you know, EBT cards, welfare, Med Medicare, Medicaid, all that stuff, um, and employment. And so what's the incentive? The incentives change, right? All of a sudden, people understand that regardless of how they treat their neighbors and their close friends and their family, they will get unemployment if they don't work. They will get um, health care if they're sick, right? If they're, I guess, below a, uh, a certain income uh, level. They will get Social Security when they, after they reach a certain age because all of that is ensured through the, um, through the theft of taxation as well as the theft of of the unborn, the prosperity of the unborn through f uh, fiat currency creation, right? That is uh, actually going full steam ahead since um, the 2008 housing crisis. So, um, so the incentives are perverted. They're changed, right? You, you no longer are encouraged to treat people with kindness and respect because you know that they're going to get robbed through taxation to fund you, whatever, whatever it is, if you're sick, if you're unemployed, right? So what's the incentive to not get sick? What's the incentive to keep your job or let's say start your own business? You know, when you're unemployed, you know, the incentive is to stay on unemployment as long as possible or stay on welfare as long as possible, right? It's more, um, it's more advantageous for a single mother with multiple kids uh, to receive benefits from the government, right, and, you know, say maybe subsidized housing and, and food and things like that, um, it's, more, it's, it's, it's more economically um, advantageous for that person, for that woman, to stay down that road rather than get a job and attempt to uh, support herself, right, because um, I forget the statistic, but um, it's something like, um, I forget, it, it's something like if a woman's making less than, I don't know, $20,000 a year, let's say, um, and she has a few kids, right, um, she, she has all these benefits, right? But in order to make enough money to, um, to exceed, you know, those benefits, she would have to make, you know, and if she makes, of course, more than $20,000, all those benefits get cut off. However, you know, if she's, she's making twenty one dollars or $22,000, you know, those extra you know, a couple thousand dollars a year are not equal to all the benefits that she was receiving 
when she was making less than 20000 So therefore, her incentive is to maintain her income at the um, below that uh, maximum limit of 20000 You know, this, I'm just putting this arbitrary amount, 20000 right? So, and I think it's something like if, if she were to work maybe for, get maybe like 50000 something like that, 50000 60000 um, then maybe she would be approaching, uh, or let's say, yeah, 40, 50, 60, she would be approaching um, the value of those government handouts, those you know, government welfare programs, the benefits that she was getting, she would be, that would cancel that out, and she would begin to make, uh, after that she would be making more. But, but she would be, have to be making so much more than the, you know, the maximum of $20,000 that it's just not the incentive is to not try and, and work and, and um, be a productive member of society. The incentive is to stay on welfare, right? Is to stay on Medicare, uh, is to stay on the EBT cards. Um, and that's, that's, that's the perverted incentives that, uh, that the state uh, brings about. And the same thing with marriage, right? The, the incentive, when, when you are in a married, um, you know, when you're married, uh, state-approved marriage license with, uh, with your spouse, <clears throat> the incentive is no longer to treat your, your spouse with um, dignity and respect, right? Because it's much more difficult, in your mind, of course, you think, you know, it's much more difficult for your spouse to, to get up and leave, right? Or get a divorce, let's say, if they so wanted to, because it's, you know, all the lawyers and all the, uh, uh, the court fees and, uh, you know, alimony and child support and all this, all this crap that they have to go through, you know, court dates and, and uh, of course, the, uh, you know, the very lengthy, uh, slow-moving nature that is um, the bureaucratic process is, uh, is quite um, unattractive to people. So, so, you know, so most people do everything they can to avoid that. And so the result is they, um, most people endure being in subpar marriages right and uh, and this is a tragedy you know and uh, you know so so it's really it's really not because they um, you know love adore and uh, appreciate each other that they stay together it's more um, because they don't want to you know pay all this money to get divorced right um, <clears throat> and uh, that's a very sad situation and so and so the incentives really change you know you know it's hence you get like all the uh, you know, domestic abuse, violence, you know, violence against the spouse, spousal rape, um, you know, and perhaps that aggression can also be turned towards the children, which is very sad, when you especially, not only is divorce very sad, but children, when children are affected, it's even worse. Um, and, uh, and the effects that, that those uh, traumatic experiences can have, you know, between uh, uh, a dueling couple, right, an angry couple, the effect that that can have on the deep psyche of the emerging adult, that is the child, um, is very profound. And, uh, and that's one of the things that, that leads to, you know, a lot of the uh, dysfunction that we see in society, you know, the um, emotionally damaging and spiritually damaging childhoods that many of us endure. So, um, you know, so, so imagine that same couple, unmarried, right, and, you know, if, because, because again, you know, talking about adultery, right? So adultery is, is now considered a crime, right? It's um, punishable by 90 days in prison or a $500 fine, right? <laughs> Another example of a ridiculous victimless crime that's um, overcrowding our prisons. Um, and, you know, as, as, as well as all the, um, all the ridiculous drug, drug laws, drug prohibition laws, you know. That are that are that exist now, um, so these people are you know crowding our prisons you know for a ridiculous you know a, a man chooses to have a relationship with someone other than his wife like I mean put aside the fact that it's if it's secret or if it's you know or, or if his wife knows about it put aside that but this is a consensual voluntary relationship right the the woman consented to it so where's the crime? Right? There is no crime. There's no victim, no victim, no crime, right? So, um, but, you know, even, let, let's say the woman and the man are honest and they, 
they decide, okay, we want to have an open relationship, right? <laughs> you know, strictly according to the law, again, that man will be a criminal, right? Because, because uh, government is, um, you know, government is a one-size-fits-all, right? Government is, um, you know, it's either black or white, right? It's either legal or illegal, right? So it's, it's a one-size-fits-all, and, uh, and that's the problem, right? There's, there's, you know, enormous variability, and so if, if, two, if two people in a relationship are honest with each other and say, you know what, let's see other people, why not? So they see other people, what's the problem with that, right? There's, there's really no problem, you know, if, if they're happier seeing other people and then, they, and then that, that uh, gives them the, um, <clears throat> the encouragement to want to stay together even more, right? Because, you know, you're open with this person, then all the better for the relationship, right? So... And again, if and some people say, well, what, what, what if they get jealous and what if they leave for the other person? Well, you know, if, if you find someone that you prefer to be than your present, you know, girlfriend, then, then do what you want. You know? <laughs> it's like, uh, why should there be laws in relationships? This is, this is entirely nonsensical. I mean, I mean, the concept of law is entirely nonsensical in itself. Um, but especially in our personal lives, um, we must endeavor to um, maintain our freedom and our independence, you know, in our personal lives especially, you know. Because, you know, just, just think about it, you know, how can you, you know, th think in your life, you know, when is the most thrilling time, the most exciting, the most um, adventurous times in your life, right? Was it at the DMV? <laughs> Was it... Uh, <laughs> you know, was it talking to a police officer? Was it uh, <laughs> at the Department of Education? <laughs> or was it, you know, you and your girlfriend, you know, running into the woods, nobody knew you were there, right? You did whatever you wanted to do, <laughs> you know? You're alone, you, you know, you feel like you're, you know, you're... Um, <clears throat> rebels you know you're so so the most beautiful times in our lives the li the times where we have the most uh the most passion the most the most creativity the most love are those times where we are not being controlled monitored regulated checked surveilled <clears throat> okay they are the times when you're free and they're the times when nobody is around watching you, right? No, no observation, no camera. <laughs> if you want to destroy passion, put a camera in your in your bedroom. <laughs> well, you know, if you're doing it for yourself, then that's different. But <laughs> say you let's say you put a camera on, and it's completely, you know, you put it on a website, and everyone, anybody can see. You know, <laughs> that's how you destroy passion. Okay, <laughs> make it public. That's how you destroy passion, right? So, so this is, um, I hope you um, are stimulated in your thoughts about marriage and you uh, are able to reconsider because I'm not against love from relationships and children. You know, all those things are very beautiful and are entirely independent of the formal institution of state-approved marriage licenses, all right? Entirely independent. And by the way, a license or permit or a certification is a permission granted by those in authority, government, to do um, you know, a particular thing, right? in this case, get married. So it does not make sense to invite an entity which, which can more commonly be described as a monopoly on violence right? and initiate aggression, what does that have to do with our personal relationship? How can that possibly have a beneficial effect? <laughs> I don't think it can. <laughs> I really don't. So um, I hope this is uh, giving you some, uh, some things to think about. All right? Keep your relationships private. Keep your personal lives private. Okay? You don't want the monopoly on violence in your life, all right? You know, keep it away as much as possible.
my advice. All right, well, that's it uh, for, for this episode. This is um, Peaceful Anarchism on the Voluntary Virtues Network. Wishing all of you have a wonderful day. Take care.